Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, chug through our chapter on sequences and series and so forth. And, and last night, we looked at our first very special, specific kind of sequence called arithmetic. And, and tonight, uh, we're going to graduate to the next level and talk about a geometric sequence. And it's just a, a, a very nice rule to talk about. I think you're going to really enjoy tonight's lesson. But the key here is... Uh, I'm going to give you my favorite example of a geometric sequence. This is my favorite one right here. And, and let me ask you, why is this not arithmetic? Okay, could anybody, anybody raise your hand and explain to me why this one is not arithmetic? And quite simply, the reason is an arithmetic sequence says that you must be adding the same amount to get from one term to the next throughout the entire sequence. And you'll notice you're not adding the same fixed amount each time. So that's we have a totally entirely different kind of pattern today. What we're doing, instead of adding a fixed amount, today we are multiplying by a fixed amount each time to get from term to term. So totally turning this upside down. We are now multiplying instead of adding by a fixed amount, and I can't stress that word enough. So the key is, what are we multiplying by within this sequence? Well, to get from one term to the next, we are simply multiplying by a 2. Today, we're going to use the letter R. It stands for common ratio. All right, and that simply describes what we're multiplying each time. So I'm going to say I have an R value of 2 because in parentheses I'll just make a note. That's what you're multiplying by to get from one term to the next. And if you ever get a little stuck and you're like, I don't know if I can figure out what the R value is just by looking at it, what you can do is you can pick any two successive terms you want. Successive just means that they're in a row. Okay, So I like to keep it simple. I'm just going to pick A sub 2 and A sub 1. And all you have to do, keep them in the right order, and if you just divide those two terms, you'll get what we call the common ratio. All right, so A2 divided by A sub 1 will always give you the common ratio. Now, hopefully, any other successive terms should indeed give you the same ratio. So if you took the fifth term and divided him by the fourth term, you'd also get the same R value of 2, okay? Okay, in the next three examples, I want you to just verify that it is a geometric sequence and then see if you can identify the common ratio or the R value. Uh, let's start out with 5, 15, 45. And although there's only three terms there, I think you could quickly identify that, yes, we are multiplying by the same fixed amount each time. If you can't quite tell, go ahead and, and take the second term and divide it by the first term. And there you go. There's your R value right there. So we could say R equals 3. Uh, the second example, I want you to take, uh, let's do 22 comma negative 11 comma 11 halves comma negative 11 fourths comma dot dot dot. Um, what are we multiplying by each time. Well, first of all, you'll notice the alternating signs. We went from a positive term here to a negative to a positive to a negative term. So that kind of implies that my R value is going to be negative when I'm all done. And again, if you're having trouble figuring out what to multiply by each time, just keep it simple. Take your second term, divide it by your first term. And then once you reduce that answer, boom, there it is. There's your R value or what we call your common ratio. For our third example, I'm really going to challenge you here. Let's try 4, 8 thirds, 16 ninths, okay, 32, 27 etc., etc., etc. And you see there's a very nice pattern. And we are multiplying by the same amount each time to get to the next term. And therefore, that's what makes it geometric. And we'll keep it simple. If you want that R value, just take the second term, which was 8 thirds, divide it by the first term. Now, I know we live in a day and age where you could simply plug this into your calculator. I still find it easier to do it by hand myself. So I'm going to be a little old-fashioned here and go ahead and do that. Uh, now, if I wanted to make 4 a fraction, it's 4 over 1. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the second fraction. I'm going to reduce a little bit there, and I got a final answer of 2 thirds. So I'm still, I'm kind of old fashioned. I still think I could do those quicker by hand than I can typing them into the calculator. But I got a common ratio of 2 thirds. And then you could use that R value to then try to produce the next couple of terms if they wanted the next couple. For instance, 
If I multiply this term here by 2 thirds, I'd get 64 over 81, I believe. And if I multiplied by 2 thirds again, I'd get 128 over, let's see, times 3 would be 243, I believe. And you could continue to perpetuate that pattern beyond those terms. Okay. Similar to our arithmetic uh, lesson, there's two really important formulas that we need to know. One that we're going to have to memorize and the other one that will be given to us on our reference sheet for the exam, which is always cool. Uh, number one is the rule for the nth term, and this is by far the most important part of today's lesson, rule for the nth term. This, just like arithmetic, this is the one you have to memorize, and we're going to say that the nth term is always equal to the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. All right, and uh, there's nothing real fancy there. It's just something we're going to have to memorize and get used to working with. Uh, the second formula is the one that's going to find the sum of a certain number of terms. All right, and it simply says that the sum of the first n terms is going to be the first term times 1 minus r to the nth power all over 1 minus r. Now, of course, r represents your common ratio there, and n represents the number of terms that you want to find. So I'll just reiterate that. r is the common ratio, a.k.a. that's the number that you keep multiplying by to get to the next term, and n represents the number of terms that you want to find the sum of. Maybe it's the first 10 terms, maybe it's the first 50 terms, whatever the case might be, that's what n will be. Okay, I've got two examples that I want to throw on this slide right here, and they both have the same set of directions. They want me to find the common ratio. And what if my sequence looked like this, uh, and they just listed the first four terms, and they said, can you, from just those first four terms, decide what the common ratio is? Again, I can't stress this enough. Keep it simple. Second term divided by the first term, and once you reduce that and you get negative one-half, That'll always gear, that's guaranteed to be your common ratio as long as, of course, it's a geometric series. If it was non-geometric, you'd be out the window. Geometric, how do you know for sure it's geometric? Well, you'll notice you multiplied the first term by negative one-half, then you multiplied the second term by negative one-half, and then the third term by negative one-half, and it was true. It kept producing the next term. If you wanted to go further, if you multiplied the fourth term by negative one-half, you'd get positive three-eighths. If you multiplied him by negative one-half, you'd get negative three-sixteenths, and again, again, on and on. Now, the second example, instead of giving you the first four terms, I'm just going to give you the rule for the nth term, and it's going to say five times the quantity three to the n minus one. Question is, how easy is it? Do I have a lot of work to do, or is the answer sitting right under my nose? Well, recall the formula that we put on the last page. We said the nth term is guaranteed to be the first term times the common ratio to the n minus one power. Therefore... And you could see the correlation here. Right there is your R value. So without doing any work at all, you could instantly tell me that the common ratio is 3. Okay, for our third example, they're asking me to find the seventh term. And here's what the given sequence. They gave me 2, 6, 18, 54. Uh, now we could sit there and do this. Um, there's you know, kind of a long way and a short way to do it. But what I'm going to encourage you to do is to, first of all, write the rule for the nth term. You could tell it is geometric because you keep multiplying by 3 each time to get to the next term. So we could say, well, the nth term is guaranteed to be the first term, common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So my nth term is guaranteed to be 2 with a common ratio of 3 to the n minus 1 power. And then if you want to find the seventh term, we'll simply substitute a 7 in for n. And let's see, that becomes, let's see, 2 times 3 to the 6th power. All right, now we probably got to reach out for our calculator at this moment. Um, I got 3 to the 6 to be 729, and then once I multiplied that by 2, I got 1458. Now, I was being very methodical and deliberate as I worked through this. You could probably skip a lot of these cleanup steps in there. In fact, excuse me. There's nothing that says you can't just plug this into the calculator all at once. I was just being a little extra deliberate about this one. So when all else fails, just take your time, write the rule for the nth term, and then substitute the appropriate number in for the n. 
Okay, here's our second to last example for the night. So we're coming down the home stretch, and we really encourage you to kind of bear down here for these last two. But they want me to find the sum of the first eight terms. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to recall that formula we wrote down at the beginning. This one you do not have to memorize, but you do need to be familiar with it and comfortable plugging in because there's so much going on in this formula. So this is the formula for the first n terms. What I do know by looking at this uh, sequence that they gave me, I instantly know that my first term is negative 5. Um, let's see, what else do I know? I know that my common ratio is negative 3 because that's what I keep multiplying by to produce the next term. Um, we also know that our n is going to be 8 because of that's, that's what they asked me for, the sum of the first 8 terms. So the sum of the first 8 terms is going to be negative 5 times 1 minus, let's see, negative 3 to the 8th power. That's going to be a pretty big number. All over 1 minus a negative 3. Now it's just a matter of cleaning things up. Um, especially if you have the new updated calculator, you can go alpha F1, grab that uh, N slash D feature. Uh, I think it's like the first or second choice on that menu. And then you can just type in this entire problem all at once. However, if you don't have the updated version, you're going to have to be either very, very careful with entering a lot of parentheses. Um, you, the most important thing is if you, if you have the TI-83, you're going to have to have an extra set of parentheses here and here, and then an extra set here and here, just to enclose your respective numerator and denominator. Um, so you, you've got a lot of parentheses going on. If you're very, very, very careful, you should end up with a final answer of 8,200. And I strongly encourage you, to everybody, to grab your calculator and make sure you can type that in and get the correct answer. Because you certainly don't want to get this far and then screw it up because you can't type it into the calculator. Okay, we're going to wrap up the night here with this particular problem, and uh, it's definitely our most challenging one, but at the same time, it's very doable, and I'm going to try to show you two different methods to do it, and you can pick out which one's your favorite, which one you're most comfortable with. Now, they're telling us right off the bat that the third term of a geometric sequence is a 3, and then the sixth term is a 1 ninth. All right, so that's kind of what it looks like right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a similar trick. It was a little confusing, but I want to use a similar trick that I used the other night on arithmetic. I want you to kind of, for now, delete those first two terms. Let's pretend that those first two mysterious unknown terms don't exist. All right. And I'm simply going to say, well, this is my first term. There's my second term. Here's my third term. And here's my fourth term. And what I could do is I remember... Let's see, the nth rule says we want the first term common ratio to the n minus 1 power. What I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a sub 4 right here, uh, which means I'm now substituting a 4 for all the n's, and I get 4 minus 1 for the power. So now we can substitute 1 ninth, we can substitute our 3, and then this is raised to the third power. So all we need to do now is try to solve for r, and that in itself is not that easy. What we can do here is we could divide both sides by 3. That's going to give me 1 27th r to the third power. And then we're going to take the cubed root. And if we try to take the cubed root, and I'm going to switch pen colors. So we got the cubed root of both sides. Uh, what that's going to do is that's going to give us 1 third is equal to r. So there's your common ratio. And now we're going to kind of cheat here. Now, for instance, um, let's pretend I started with the 3 right here, and I multiplied him by the common ratio, 1 third. That would produce a 1. And if I multiplied that by 1 third, I'd get 1 third. And if I multiplied that term by 1 third, I would indeed get the 1 ninth. So that's kind of my way of checking. Now, here comes the big trick. Can you do that backwards and get these terms back here. Now anytime you want to go backwards, let's say what's the opposite of multiplying or what's the inverse of multiplying? Division, right. And so instead of multiplying by one third to go forwards, I'm going to divide by one third to go backwards. And if I divide that term by one third, I actually get a nine. And if I divide that term by one third, I get a 27. And so we've just proven that the first term is indeed a 27. Now, 
I guess I'm kind of leaning the other way. I, I, I told you at the beginning of the slide I was going to show you two different methods. I, I strongly believe that the one we just did is the most efficient, straightforward method. So um, in, instead of taking the risk of confusing you further, I'm just going to stick with this one method. I'm going to encourage you to, to use the same path. And once we get a few of these examples under our belt tomorrow, I think we'll certainly gain confidence and, and be ready for a problem like this on Friday's test. So good luck, and I will see you guys tomorrow.